Ah, oh, hey guys. Right, bear with me one second. So, welcome to this tutorial on shooting a time lapse with just your camera. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your camera, compose a shot, and edit your time lapse for maximum impact. All you need is your camera and a little bit of patience. Let's just get straight into it. Okay, so that was uh, that intro was from ChatGPT. I've pretty much been using it for everything since downloading it about 30 minutes ago. So I thought, why not use it for the intro? Uh, it did a pretty good job. So, yeah, you heard it. We're pretty much just going to be, well, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I go about creating my time lapses. And literally all I need is my camera and my tripod and a bit of software to help bring everything together. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go out in London and show you how exactly I would go about setting up and shooting my time lapse. I'm going to show you how I edit it. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how I add sound effects and music using things like Epidemic Sound. So uh, yeah, I hope that pretty much covers everything and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if this is the first time that you're seeing my face on your screen, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. But yeah, let's just get straight into it. Okay, so the first tip when you're gonna go out and film or shoot one of your time lapses is that you wanna get a lot of movement within it. So that can be from people, it can be from the clouds and the sky. Uh, it can also be from traffic, cars and stuff like that. I've come to Millennium Bridge here in London. We're going to have a lot of movement from people constantly going across the bridge. And we also have a lot of movement from stuff in the skyline like cranes. And we also have uh, a lot of cloud, which is going to be moving a lot as the time lapse goes on. Um, so as long as you can have a lot of movement in your time lapse, that is going to make sure that it's going to be the best it possibly can be. Okay, so in terms of the actual time lapse itself within your camera, I think most cameras should have like an interval mode built in. This is the Sony a7 III. It's got an interval shooting mode built into it. I don't have like a little self-timing trigger either. So I'm just going to literally use the inbuilt interval shooting mode. Uh, so I'm going to be shooting at an interval of five seconds. So every five seconds it will take one photo. Uh, it's going to be done over a period of about 30 minutes uh, and it's going to take around 400 photos in total. Um, I leave my AE tracking um, on low uh, and that is pretty much it I think for the settings. Okay so tip number two, a few things. First of all you want to make sure that you're shooting in a manual white balance. Just select one that suits like the cloudy environment that we currently have. The last thing you want is each individual raw image having a completely different white balance. It just makes things a bit harder when it comes to editing. Uh, we also want to make sure we're shooting in manual focus. Uh, this is because we don't want our sort of focus uh, field to be jumping back and forth. We want it just to be set uh, and then we don't have to worry about the autofocus potentially uh, mucking up. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to be shooting in aperture priority mode. So basically, I've set my aperture to f2.8. It doesn't really matter what you set it to, but this also prevents the, the depth of field from jumping. Uh, it also means that the shutter speed is going to adjust accordingly. So let's say all of a sudden it gets really cloudy and it gets super dark. The shutter speed is going to compensate uh, to make sure that the shot is always the correct exposure. And that is pretty much it uh, for your settings for your time lapse. Uh, other than a bit of patience, that's all you really need. Okay, so that's pretty much it. As you can see, the bridge is absolutely heaving with people right now, which is perfect for the time lapse. Everything's set up, so I'm just going to go ahead. It's on a five second timer. So after five seconds, the time lapse should begin and then we just have to wait. Okay, so I've decided to reshoot the time lapse that I literally just shot. Basically, on the bridge, uh, it was a little bit too shaky for it. So I've come down here, as you can see, we're on some solid concrete, so we won't have any issues. But I actually have a little tip for you. I've added on this uh, ND filter. So essentially what that means is I can crank down my shutter speed to one third of a second, which means I'm going to get a really nice kind of natural motion blur on all the people. Uh, and it's just going to make the time lapse look that much better. I'm going to show you guys everything in editing. I just wanted to give you guys a quick little tip um, before I packed away. Now, in my opinion, shooting a time lapse isn't really too much of a painstaking process. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep the editing as quick and minimal as possible so I can show you guys exactly how I would go about doing this. So first things first, you want to go ahead and move all of your images from your SD card onto a folder on your computer. Just name that folder. Mine's called St. Paul's Raw Images and we're just gonna drag that straight into Adobe Lightroom. Uh, and then we have 
about 400 still images. I'm going to go ahead uh, and click import on this into our Lightroom library. Now, depending on the speed of the computer, this will take either a quick amount of time or a slow amount of time. But thankfully, we have everything loaded now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit develop. So obviously, we're not going to sit here and edit every photo individually. That would just take way too long. Thankfully, there is a much more convenient way of doing it. Essentially, because the lighting pretty much stayed the same the entire time, we can actually just edit one photo, that being our first image, and then synchronize these settings and lighting across all of the images so we get a really nice, seamless, and smooth look. Uh, if I was shooting a day to night time lapse, I definitely wouldn't use this method because you couldn't edit uh, a daytime photo, then copy those exact same settings to a nighttime photo. And that's where it gets a bit more complicated, but thankfully the lighting conditions stay the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and edit this photo to how I like. I'm not gonna be too dramatic with it. Uh, I'm just gonna make basically just corrections. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and copy those settings across all of the images. Okay, so I've now edited the first image. I kept it pretty clean. I didn't want to just go over the top of it. As you can see, this is before, this is after. Basically, I've just uh, brought down some of the highlights and played with a few of the colors and the clarity, and that is pretty much it. So what you want to do is you want to hit Command or Control A, uh, depending on what setup you're running. Press that, and that will literally highlight every single image in the bottom here. Uh, and then you're going to want to go ahead and hit Sync, and you want to make sure that everything is selected so hit check all and then hit synchronize and this is literally gonna synchronize every single one of those changes that you made across all of the images uh, and then that is our really quick way of editing every single photo just like that okay so now that we have all of those images uh, edited uh, basically this is a really crucial part so we're gonna go ahead and export those images so if you hit command a again on the keyboard to make sure that all of the images are selected we're gonna hit command shift E to bring up our export panel so basically uh, what you really need to make sure you do here is create a make sure this is checked here so put in a subfolder and name that whatever you want uh, I'm gonna call that time-lapse st. Paul edits we'll call it that and then you want to come down to file naming so this is where the really important part is so you want to make sure that you've selected custom name sequence uh, and then just call it whatever you want I've called it Paul and make sure that the start number is number one Essentially, this just uh, names and numbers every single file in order of which it was taken so that when we import it into Premiere Pro, it knows exactly the order of the images um, so that the time lapse is in order. Then you just want to hit export uh, and then we just simply wait and then we're going to move into Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so now that you've exported all of your individual images from Lightroom, we're going to want to go ahead and open up Adobe Premiere Pro. So if we go to file, uh, oh, hello. If we go to File, uh, Import. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got Time Lapse St. Paul Edits. So you want to open that folder and then click the first image. Now, don't do anything else, just click the first image, then hit Show Options. And you want to make sure that image sequence is selected. So this will literally import the whole thing as a sequence and merge all of those individual frames together into one video. As you can see here, you can sort of get a, a quick little preview of what your uh, hyperlapse looks like. Uh, but we want to go ahead and import this into our Premiere Pro sequence. Now this is where we can play around with it a little bit, add a few sound effects, kind of bring it to life. One thing that I like to do with all of my uh, time lapses before anything though, is to apply a warp stabilizer. So if you go to your effects panel and just type in warp, you can simply just drag this warp stabilizer onto your uh, sequence and then it's going to make sure that it's really smooth and stabilized because sometimes you can get like a, a little jump uh, if the tripod moves or if there's a bit of wind or something and it kind of knocks the frame a bit. The warp stabilizer really helps to kind of make sure that everything is smooth. So once we've applied our warp stabilizer, we can just go ahead and basically preview the time lapse that we spent so long waiting for. So I'm just gonna hit the space bar uh, and there we go. It's really cool. You can see how the sort of slow shutter speed has actually kind of helped to blur all the people. You can see here, they're all a little bit blurred and that kind of creates that kind of illusion that it's, I don't know, it's just a lot more quicker, it's less digital and it's a bit more smooth. Uh, so that's the reason why I went back and redid that one with a slower shutter. So in order to really spice up the time lapse and to really bring it to life, it isn't really complete without having good music and good sound effects. So that brings me to 
epidemic sound. So that is where I'm going to be getting all of my music and sound effects for this uh, time lapse. So um, I'm going to come up to it here. If you are interested in this at all, there is a little link in my description where you guys can get a three 30 day trial if you don't already have it. Uh, and there you can really just sort of check it out see what it's about. Uh, so I'm going to try and find a decent track for uh, my time lapse. So I'm going to come to the browse section. As you can see, it's really nicely split up into different genres. There's a whole A to Z of different um, themes and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to come up here into themes, as I just said, and it's split up even more into different uh, playlists, which makes it really easy to find songs. You're not, com you know, you're not totally overwhelmed with tracks. So I'm going to come down to the cinematic time lapse. I feel like that's quite appropriate. As you can see, there's more playlists here. You have independent movies, adventure trailers. But I'm going to come up to the cinematic school one. And I found this track earlier. I'll let it play now. It kind of really suits the overall vibe of the time lapse that I'm trying to create. It's not too dramatic. It's kind of quite smooth. So once you find the track on the sound effects you're looking for, you can literally just uh, hit download. But for example, let's say you find a song that you quite like, but it's not quite there. You can hit this button here, which I really like, and it's called Find Similar. And if you hit that, it brings you to a whole bunch more songs which are really similar to that song. Uh, so you can really nail the song that you're looking for. But I'm going to come back now and download that track that I really like. So all you have to do is just hit download and hit this download button and then you can bring it straight into Adobe Premiere Pro. So I have went ahead and imported a few sounds from Epidemic Sound. We've got the uh, backing track. We've also got a few cinematics to kind of really bring this to life. So first of all, I'm just gonna import the music. So I think we need around just over 15 seconds. So I'm gonna drag that straight into our timeline. Uh, and as you can see, it makes so much difference having music uh, in a time lapse. So I'm also gonna add in some sound effects. I really think other than music, you kind of need uh, a bit of sound effects to sort of recreate the ambiance. Uh, so I found this one here, it's called uh, Chinatown in London. So it's basically just the ambiance of Chinatown in London. Uh, it's just like background noises and voices, uh, but that's obviously helping to recreate what it was like when I was shooting that time lapse with everyone sort of walking over the bridge. Now, obviously the music's gonna be quite loud. You might not be able to hear the people, so if you right click on that audio just dragged in and hit audio gain, I'm gonna increase this by around 10 decibels, hit enter, and then we're gonna replay this and you're gonna you're gonna hear the difference. But yeah, I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, it was a bit of a more long-winded one, but I wanted to show you exactly how I go about doing this. I think in one of my future videos, I'd like to show you guys how I go about creating a full day to night time-lapse. That's a lot more complex, but that's for another day. Uh, but in the meantime, if you guys are at all interested in the Epidemic Sound, there's a link in the description for a free 30-day trial. It's a great website that I've been using for the past four years and it's where I get all my music for YouTube from, so I don't get any copyright strikes or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.